Hi guys, welcome to Easy Bio. Today's video is going to be the first part of a three part series called Producing New Cells. The focus of today's video is going to be a type of cell division called mitosis. But, 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 but first, before we get into mitosis, you will have to know about the, something called diploid chromosome complement. I know it sounds super fancy right now, but we're going to break it down a little to make it easier to understand. So diploid refers to a cell that has two sets of chromosomes. You should already know about chromosomes, but if you don't, I will leave a link to my video about DNA. So from this diagram, you can see that each set has a specific chromosome. The orange colored chromosomes belong to one set and the purple colored chromosomes belong to the other set. Since the cell has two different sets, it is called diploid. In our bodies, we have a lot more chromosomes. Each set has 23 chromosomes, which makes 46 in total. And every chromosome has a matching chromosome on the other set. Okay, now for chromosome complement. Chromosome complement is just the term for how many chromosomes an organism has. If we could get, get together, diploid ding, ding, ding complement is just a term for the total number of chromosomes in two sets. So for humans, that's 46 chromosomes. Notice that when I'm saying the number of chromosomes, I make sure to include four humans. This is because different species of mammals all have different diploid chromosome complements. For example, a mosquito has a diploid chromosome of six, while a chimpanzee has 48 chromosomes in two sets. How many chromosomes do you think it has in one set? Right, so now we know what a diploid chromosome complement is. We can finally move on to cell division. Have you ever wondered why there are so many cells in your body? That is through cell division. All cells are produced when other cells divide. Multicellular organisms, that is organisms with a lot of cells, for example, humans or cats, start off as just one cell. The cell then divides to make more cells and those cells divide to make more cells and on and on until a developed organism is made. A really good example of this is shown by the process of a developing baby. So like I said, it starts off as a single cell. When the cell divides, it produces two new cells called daughter cells. Then the daughter cells divide and four cells are made. The first cell is known as the parent cell. But cell division doesn't just stop after a baby is made. It actually continues inside even adults in areas with cells called stem cells. Stem cells are unspecialized cells that are used for cell division. Specialized cells cannot divide in the body anymore. I will talk more about stem cells in my next video, so stay tuned for that. The reason why cell division is so important is because it allows growth of organisms and replaces dead or damaged cells. So for example, when making a baby, cell division is what changes those cells to a developed bigger organism. Now, Let's learn about the different types of cell division. Mitosis, which is the division of a cell's nucleus, and cytokinesis, which is the division of a cell's cytoplasm. What we're going to focus on though is mitosis. If you're interested in learning more about cytokinesis, I will leave a link to our website about it. The point of mitosis is to maintain the diploid chromosome complement. If you can't remember what the diploid chromosome complement is, here's a quick reminder. Before mitosis happens, the chromosomes need to replicate. So if the cell originally had four chromosomes, when it replicates, it will have eight chromosomes. Now, let's learn about the stages. The first stage, the DNA in the chromosome coil up and the chromosomes shrink and become thicker. The doubled chromosomes are now called chromatids. Then the nuclear membrane breaks down. Rope-like structures called spindle fibers attach to the chromatids. Then the chromatids are pulled to opposite ends of the cells called poles. Now that the chromatids are separated, they are called chromosomes again. Their DNA becomes looser and a new nuclear membrane forms around them. Two new nuclei are also formed. These nuclei now have the same number of chromosomes as the parent cell. 
If the chromosomes hadn't replicated, we would have ended up with half the number of chromosomes in each cell. So, so, so if you look at the parent cell I showed before, you will see that I has four chromosomes. Just like the new one. Finally, the cytoplasm of the cell divides to produce two new daughter cells. The diploid chromosome number has been maintained, in this case, four. With the number maintained, it means that all the genetic information has been inherited by the daughter cell. The daughter cells now have all the genes to work properly. But anyway, that, that's the end of my first part to my producing new cell series. My next video is going to be about specialization. Goodbye.